teach you like how to make little widgets or gadgets or gadgets or dee dee. These are big, strong coal miners. They said, sir, we want to dig coal. I said, I agree with you. I agree. Right? Remember that? Their grandfathers did it. Their fathers did it. It's incredible. And it's really happening. We are back. The coal industry is back. So when I came here originally, West Virginia, frankly, was down and out. It was not doing exactly well. One of the last. Do you know that a few months ago, it hit where West Virginia, on a per capita basis, is one of the most successful GDP states in our union. So we went from being down and out, you're one of the most successful in the union. Very close to the top. That is some big change. And I've had so many people, I was backstage, and people are coming up to me, Mr. President, thank you, sir, for saving our nation. Because you understand what that means. We couldn't do anything. Had the other side won, they would have poured on more regulations, raised your taxes. They would have done things that were so bad, you had a very low GDP. It was 1.2 percent. You know, 1.2. It was going down. It was going to be a negative. Last quarter, we just hit, as you all know, 4.1. Nobody thought that was bad. If I always say it. If I would have ever said that shortly after winning, we're going to hit 4.1, those people back there would have said, this guy, no good. Fake news. Fake news. How fake? How fake are they? Fake news and the Russian witch hunt. We got a whole big combination. Where is the collusion? You know, they're still looking for collusion. Where is the collusion? Find some collusion. We want to find the collusion. At the beating heart of this election is border security. We have to have it, right? We have to have it. Iowa officials and so many other countries have been reporting numbers where they're having a lot of problems with people coming in. People are coming in, but we're getting them out. We have MS-13 on the run. They poured in here with Obama. We have them on the run because we love the men and women of ICE. A blue wave in November means open borders, which means massive crime. A red wave means safety and strength. That's what it is. The new platform of the Democrat Party is to abolish ICE. A vote for any Democrat in November is a vote to eliminate immigration enforcement, throw open our borders and set loose vicious predators and violent criminals, they'll be all over our communities. They will be preying on our communities. Yet while many Democrats are calling to abolish ICE, today our brave ICE officers successfully carried out a 14-year-old deportation order against a Nazi criminal who was living in New York the last known Nazi officer living in the United States. They've been trying to get him out for decades. President Obama tried, they all tried. We got him out. Gone. He's gone. He's back in Germany. ICE officers are heroes who uphold our laws, and they really do. They uphold our laws and they defend our communities like nobody you've ever seen. And yes, they're tough, they're strong, they're smart, they have great heart, but they go into these communities loaded up with the kind of criminals you don't want to be dealing with. They walk in like it's another day in the office. They're tougher, 
They're stronger. It's what these other people fear. And by the way, our ICE folks and our border patrol folks, they have no fear. The job they do is incredible. And by the way, while we're at it, law enforcement, these are great, great people, and they're doing an incredible job. Right? Every single day, ICE is tracking down gang members, drug dealers, predators and killers, and we're either throwing them in jail or throwing them the hell out of our country. If you want to save ICE, if you want to protect our border and our border patrol, if you want to stop this craziness of sanctuary cities where criminals are protected, take a look at Chicago. How about the mayor of Chicago? That's like a war zone. That's a great city. That's like a war zone. This is what those policies do. Last week, 62 people were shot, 12 died. This is like our country. There's no reason for this. The Republican Party stands proudly with our courageous ICE officers and Border Patrol agents. And by the way, you know who wants the wall more than any of us? ICE and Border Patrol, because they know that's going to be a big, big factor in stopping the drugs from coming in. The human traffickers, which is worse all over the world than at any time in the history of our world. Human traffickers. Who would believe? And it's because of the Internet. This election is about security. And this election is also about jobs we have produced. We have produced. Thanks to Republicans, our economy is booming like it has never boomed before. We've created another number that nobody would have believed if I said it during the campaign. Four million new jobs since the election. Nobody would have believed it. Almost 3.9 million Americans have been lifted off food stamps. Think of that. They don't need them because they have a job. They're eating better now. They don't need food stamps. Almost 4 million. Think of it. Last year in West Virginia, per capita income grew 40% faster than the national average. 40%. Congratulations. Congratulations. I told you, last time I was here, you weren't so happy like you are now. We've added over 400,000 new manufacturing jobs nationwide. That number is soon going to exceed 600,000. And our opponent said, there's no such thing as manufacturing jobs anymore, right? And I'd say, oh, I see, we're not going to make things anymore. Think of it. We'll be close to 600,000 very soon. We have companies pouring in to our country. They're coming back. These are companies that left. They're coming back to Michigan. They're coming back to West Virginia. They're coming back to Pennsylvania and Ohio. They're coming to Florida. They're coming back, not just opening, they're coming back. They left and now they're coming back because they want to be where the action is. And the action is in the United States of America. So the economic growth, as I said, when it hit 4.1 percent, everybody was like, that's amazing, except me, because it's going to go much higher than that. When I finish these trade deals, and the tariffs are very important, these companies come in, and I say uh, to the European Union, very nice people, I say, Jean-Claude, we'd like to negotiate a new trade agreement with the European Union. We lost $151 billion over the last number of years per year. Does anyone know what $151 billion per year is? And he very respectfully said, Mr. President, but we are very happy with the deal. I said, I'd be happy if I were you too. 
I'd be very happy. I said a second time, a third time, and a fourth time. But they were happy with the deal. But we weren't happy because they have barriers up and because they have tariffs. The, all the things we don't have. You want to build a car and send it to Europe? How many Chevrolets are there in the middle of Berlin? Not too many. Maybe one? I doubt it. I don't think you could find the one. So they have barriers. So I said, come on, let's go. And then he said, no. I said, listen. And I said this to numerous countries. I mean, in all fairness, I don't want to single out anybody. But I said it to numerous. He says, listen, here's what we're going to do. It's all about the cars. It's all about the cars. Tremendously big industry. We're going to put a 25% tax on every car that comes from the European Union into the United States. And that'll take our loss and trade deficit of $151 billion, and it'll give us a surplus of $151 billion. That's a fairly dramatic swing. And that'll take one little signature, Donald J. Trump. And I got a call. Mr. President, when can we meet? We'd like to see you. Welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight, the president, as you've seen, giving an animated speech in Charleston, West Virginia. We're going to go back to that until it ends. Great respect. Tremendous respect for China. But they have taken advantage of our country for decades. We have rebuilt China. We have rebuilt China. I used to talk about this. I didn't press it initially because I wanted them to help us with North Korea. And they have. And they have. And we're doing well with North Korea. You know, these guys, it's been, what, three months since I left? These guys say, what's happening with North Korea? Hey, folks, they've been doing this stuff for 75 years, three months. What happened? I, I can tell you. And I got along very well with Kim Jong-un and really good chemistry. But I can tell you, there's been no missile launches. There's been no rocket launches. We got the hostages back. And we didn't pay $1.8 billion in cash for the hostages. Hey, There's been no nuclear tests. And they say, what's taking so long? I said, for 40, 50, 60 years, but during the nuclear age, for 25 years, you've been working. And nobody complained about the fact that President Obama was unable to do anything with North Korea. And he considered it like, just read the papers, you'll see what he considered it. So I've been three months. I have a very good relationship with Chairman Kim. We'll see what happens. Who knows? Can I be honest? Who knows? But I haven't taken off the sanctions. We have massive sanctions. But I want to take them off quickly, but they've got to get rid of the nukes. They've got to get rid of the nukes. Got to get rid of the nukes. But who knows what's going to happen? I mean, maybe it'll work out, but, but I think we've done a good job, you know, in a short period of time. You remember, it started off extremely hostile. Remember, they said, he's going to get us into a war. They thought my rhetoric was too strong. You remember. I won't say it because I don't want to insult Chairman Kim. But you remember. Mom, you remember. Elton John. I don't want to insult, so I'm not going to mention it. But the fake news back there said, he is going to get us into a war. He's crazy. This guy is crazy. Our president is crazy. And then I went to meet the leaders and the folks that run NATO, all the leaders of NATO. And they weren't paying their bills. They were delinquent, you know, in real estate. I love real estate. When somebody doesn't pay their rent, you say, Shelley, you say, they're delinquent, you gotta pay your rent. And I met them last year. And Stoltenberg, 
Secretary General, great guy of NATO, is my single biggest fan, bigger than any fan I have in the room. You know why? Because nobody was paying their bills. He was in charge of NATO. He couldn't get any money. But last year, I went a year ago. I said, you're not paying your bills. You got to pay your bills. He picked up $44 billion. He told that to the press. They didn't report. $44 billion. And then I just left recently. And we're going to pick up at least another close to $100 billion extra. I said to him, you got to pay your bills. The United States is paying close to 90% of the cost of protecting Europe. And I think that's wonderful. I said to Europe, I said, folks, NATO's better for you than it is for us. Believe me. And what happened is they asked a question. They have small countries, big countries, all these countries. We're supposed, we're supposed to protect them. I said, look, it's very simple. You got to pay up. You got to pay your bill. And somebody said, sir, there's a president of a country calling me sir. That shows respect. I say, yes, Mr. President. He said, would you leave us if we don't pay our bills? Now, they hated my answer. I said, yeah, I would have to consider it. You got to pay your bills. They hated the answer. But if I said, no, I won't leave you. You don't have to pay your bills. I won't leave. I promise we'll always protect you. You will always be protected. Don't pay your bills. Then they're never going to pay their bills. So I said, yes, I will leave you if you don't pay your bills. And you could see those checkbooks coming out for billions of dollars. They pay their bills. And I think we'll pick up, over the next short while, over $100 billion. And then they said, the fake news, they said, President Trump treated the NATO nation leaders, in brackets, I put brackets, who have been ripping us off, in brackets, treated the NATO leaders with tremendous contempt and disrespect. And I said, no, no, no. They disrespected our country because they weren't paying. Now they're paying. How about if we got into a conflict because a country was attacked and now we're in World War III and we're protecting a country that was attacked and didn't pay its bills. I feel so stupid. We're protecting a country that wasn't paying its bills. So I got them to pay $100 billion. It's going to be much more than that. But tremendous amounts of money. Tremendous. They got to pay up. They're paying up. And then they made the statement that I showed great disrespect. But actually, I have a great relationship with all of those people, 28 people. All of them. We have a great relationship because now they respect us. They respect our country again. They didn't respect our country. They didn't respect our country. They respect us again. And you see it with China. China's market is way down. I don't want them to go down, but they're down close to 30 percent in three months. I don't want them. I want them to do well. I want to be their friend. When but I came, we had to do we, things that we had to do. When I came, we were heading in a certain direction that was going to allow China to be bigger than us in a very short period of time. That's not going to happen anymore. Not going to happen anymore. Can't let that happen. The long winding road, you know, the long winding road. And I have tremendous respect for China. I mean, the energy, the genius, it's incredible what they've done. And hopefully we're going to have a great relationship. But we can't do it. It's got to be a two-way street. We have only one-way streets, not only China, with everybody. It's a one-way street. Our enemies, our friends, our allies. I mean, our allies treat us worse than our enemies. Believe it. So it's all changing. And when we get those trade deals done properly, and you know what bothers me? I have people coming to me, some people in Congress, Sir, can you get this deal done immediately? I said, it doesn't work that way. I don't want to go too fast. The deal's not going to be any good if we do that. We've got to take time. It's got to gestate, right? The word gestate. 
It's like when you're cooking a chicken. Time, time, turkey for Thanksgiving. My mother would say, oh, eight hours. I said, eight hours? She made the greatest turkey I've ever had. It takes time. It takes time. So when they run and they say, oh, can you do NATO right now? Could we sign it next week? I said, wait a minute, look. I like Mexico. I like the new leader. I think he's going to be terrific. A little different than us. I think I'm doing better with him than with the capitalist. But he knows that Mexico needs the United States. They need the United States. Canada charges us close to 300% tariffs for dairy products going into Canada, which is essentially saying, we don't want your dairy products. This is a wall. They have a wall in a different way. It's called an economic wall. I don't want that. I said, Justin, I mean, I don't want to have too much fun with you, Justin. You can't do that. <laughs> Justin Trudeau, nice guy. But they've taken advantage of us for so many years that we have to take our time. But with that being said, we're doing very well. We're on our way with a good deal, a fair deal. I don't want a good deal. I want a fair deal for both of us. Fair with Mexico. And you've heard me say it. As an example, when China makes a car, they sell it into the United States. There's two and a half percent tariff, of which they don't pay. So they pay nothing. Other than that, it's a wonderful deal. When we make a car, we sell it into China, and there's a 25 percent tariff, and that's just the beginning. There's others. A man was driving down a street in China, and he looked over, and it was a Chevrolet-like Camaro. Does that make sense? Is it a Camaro? I think it cost thirty-nine or forty thousand dollars. He's in China. He's in Beijing, and he shouts across. They're stopped. He th shouts across. Tell me, how much did that car cost in China? Guy looks one hundred nineteen thousand dollars. Now you understand that, right? It's all taxes and taxes and taxes. We can't do that anymore. Can't do it. We are a country with unbelievable potential. We are a country that has been ripped off by everybody. And we're not going to be ripped off anymore. And if it takes me the little angst to tell senators and congressmen and all of the people that really do have your, your heart in their hands, in many cases, sometimes I wonder where they're coming from with these suggestions. But it's going to have to take that little period of time. With that being said, we're moving so fast, nobody could even believe it. And every country wants to make a deal. Because we're like the big, fat piggy bank that everybody wants to rob. And we're not going to let them rob us anymore. Is that OK, West Virginia? We're not going to let them rob us anymore. Every day, we're keeping our promises. We're canceling. Obama's illegal, anti-coal-destroying regulations, the so-called Clean Power Plan. Doesn't that sound nice? Clean Power. You know, when I ended the Paris Accord, what's a more beautiful name than the Paris Accord? Let's call it the West Virginia Accord. Maybe I would have signed. But when I entered it, that was going to cost us hundreds of billions of dollars, hundreds of billions. And other countries, as an example, China, didn't kick in until many years in the future. We kicked in immediately. Russia went back many years, which was not a clean time in terms of the environment. Because you know what? We all agree. We want a clean environment. We want a strong, beautiful, clean environment. I want clean air. I want crystal clean water. And we've got it. We've got the cleanest country in the planet right now. There's nobody cleaner than us. And it's getting better and better. But I'm getting rid of some of these ridiculous rules and regulations which are killing our companies, our states, and our jobs. Just today, we announced our new affordable clean energy proposal. 
that will help our coal-fired power plants and save consumers, you, me, everybody, billions and billions of dollars. We've eliminated a record number of job-killing regulations, and Republicans have passed the biggest tax cuts and reform. The reform's very important, but you know what I've said. I don't want to talk about reform because nobody knows what it means. That could be a tax increase. I said, how come it's been Ronald Reagan since you got the last big tax cut? And they looked at me and said, we don't know. And a lot of the great senators and the congressmen came up to see me, and they had the 2018 tax reform. I said, what the hell does that mean? Are you going to raise taxes? Then I found out this is what they've done for 40 years. Tax reform. I said, nobody knows what it means. And we do have reform in there, great reform. But they said, nobody knows. I said, nobody knows what it means. Here it is. I want to put it down, tax cuts. They said, what would be your favorite name, Mr. President? I said, the tax cut, 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 cut bill. And we almost did it. We almost did it. But in all fairness, in this case, Congressman, a couple of them thought it was a little bit tacky. So we call it the tax cut and jobs bill. But you know what? We have done great reform. But it's the biggest tax cut in the history of our country. And you people are benefiting by it. You're benefiting by it. And companies are benefiting, and those companies are the ones that are providing all of the jobs. We're setting records on jobs. We're protecting also, so important for West Virginia and a lot of states, we are protecting, again, religious liberty. And we're also standing up to social media censorship. That's the new thing. That's the new thing. You know, I'd rather have fake news like CNN. I would rather have fake news, it's true, than have anybody, including liberals, socialists, anything, than have anybody stopped and censored. You gotta live, we gotta live with it. We gotta get used to it. We're gonna live with fake news. There's too many sources. Every one of us is sort of like a newspaper. You have Twitter, you have whatever you have, Facebook. But everyone, you can't have censorship. You can't pick one person and say, well, we don't like what he's been saying, he's out. So we'll live with fake news. I mean, I hate to say it, but we have no choice because that's by far the better alternative. You can't have people saying censorship because you know what, it can turn around. It can be them next. It can be them next. We believe in the right of Americans to speak their minds. We repealed the core of Obamacare, I told you, individual mandate, because we want to give critically ill patients, we have to give them access. We have to give health care to people. We want the right to try. Do you know what the right to try is? They've been trying to get this for 40 years. They couldn't get it. A person is terminally ill. They're terminally ill. They're really sick. And I know people, if they have money, they travel all over the world to try and find a cure. If they don't have money, they die. They die. We have the greatest scientists in the world. That's why China and so many other people, they're trying to, countries, they're trying to steal our technology. We can't let them happen. But we have so many people that want to be able to give, it's like hope, right to try. I love the name. It's a right to try. They never had it before. So a person's terminally ill, and we have a great new drug, but it's going to take another two, three years to have it approved. Okay? Maybe longer. But the tests are really looking good. And this person is very sick. And this person is going to be dead in 90 days. And we couldn't get that drug for that person, no matter who you were. And I said, wait a minute, what's the story with this? Now, there were a lot of complications because the insurance companies had problems, the medical companies had everybody. A lot of people didn't want them in the stats, horrible things. But I said, well, what's going on? We're going to take the right to try. And we went through with the help of Corey, with the help of your great, wonderful, you are a coal lover, aren't you, huh, Shelley? But with the help of Shelley, 
soon to be with the help of Patrick. Patrick's, oh, he's going to get a lot of things. He's going to get it. We got it approved. So now, if we have a great drug that hasn't been approved and somebody has a certain illness, they're going to be able to be to try. And you know what? Some of the drugs we have in the pipeline are amazing. It's going to work for a lot of people, and it's going to give them hope. It's going to give them hope. Big thing. We've just secured $6 billion to fight the opioid epidemic, and I know in West Virginia that's a big deal, right? That's a big deal. We confirmed a record number of circuit court judges. It's a record. And it's going bigger and bigger. We have a lot of them in the line if Schumer would ever get them approved. He's not exactly thrilled about approving them, that I can tell you. We confirmed the great Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court of the United States. And as I just said, Justice Kavanaugh is doing great. Looks like, I, I don't know, very tough. Central casting. How do you vote against him? But the Democrats may find a way. We've secured a record $700 billion for our military this year and $716 billion for next year. Billion with a B. Our military will be stronger and bigger and better and more sophisticated than it's ever been. Ever. And hopefully we'll never have to use it. You know, I get a lot of good fighters out here. I see some of them. I know some of them. And the one thing about a fighter or a nation or whatever you want, the stronger your military, the better chance you have of never having to use it. We don't want to use it. We don't want to use it. And all of that equipment is being built right here in the USA. We make the greatest fighter jets in the world. We make the greatest ships in the world. We make the greatest missiles and rockets. Nobody does it like us. And in my direction, the Pentagon is working hard to create the sixth in the 2016 election of the American this puts Donald Trump forces, himself at the heart the of a crime of illegally concerning the payment of a president. That's very exciting. We need it. That's the new frontier. And I'm not just talking about sending rockets to the moon. I'm talking about militarily. That's where it's at. Thanks to the leadership of UN Ambassador Nikki Haley, we've reduced the United Nations spending by $1.3 billion, saving U.S. taxpayers $350 million. Just came out, but nobody wants to write it. We just passed a landmark VA accountability law, that's where people that don't treat our vets properly, we look at them and we say, you're fired, get the hell out. <laughs> 45 years they've been trying to pass it. 45 years they've tried to pass it. We also pass Veterans Choice so that if our veterans can't get the care they need, they have the right to see a private doctor. They don't have to wait in line for three weeks, four weeks, eight weeks, two months. I withdrew the United States from the horrible Iran nuclear deal. And this month, we reimposed tough sanctions on Iran's nuclear program and on Iran. I also recognized the capital of Israel and opened the American Embassy in Jerusalem. And I understand now what happened. Because every president, many, many presidents, they said, we're going to do it. We're going to move our embassy to Jerusalem. It's going to be the capital of Israel. And we're going to do it. We're going to do it. And then they don't do it. Politicians, they don't do it. So I said, I'm going to do it during the campaign. I said it right here in West Virginia. And I now understand why many, many presidents before me said they were going to do it. 
and didn't do it because I was inundated with calls from foreign leaders. Every country, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, please don't do it, don't do it. And so actually what I did, I was about five days off, I stopped taking calls. I said, I'll call you back next week. Because I knew what they were going to ask me. It's much easier to say, oh, gee, I didn't know you were calling for that reason. So I approved it. And it should have been done years ago. And if there's ever going to be peace, remember I said it, with the Palestinians, it was a good thing to have done because we took it off the table. Because every time there were peace talks, they never got passed. Jerusalem becoming the capital. So I said, let's take it off the table. And you know what? In the negotiation, Israel will have to pay a higher price because they want a very big thing. But I took it off the table. They could never get by. You understand that, Corey? You both understand that. Shelly, they could never get past the fact of Jerusalem becoming the capital. Now it's off the table. There's nothing to negotiate. But they'll get something very good because it's their term next. Let's see what happens. It's very interesting. I've always heard that's the toughest deal of all deals. That's called peace between Israel and the Palestinians. They say that's the toughest of all deals. Let's see what happens. Instead of apologize, that's what we're doing is we're winning. Instead of apologizing for America, we're standing up for America and we're standing up for the heroes who defend our country. But to continue this incredible success, we must elect more Republicans. We must elect Patrick Morrissey. We need him. We need Patrick. So get your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers, your family members. Get the people that love our country and get out to vote. We need his vote so badly. We need his energy. You're going to see, this guy has energy. Loyal citizens like you helped to build this country. Together, we're taking back our country, returning power to where it belongs to the American people. From Morgantown to Madison to Charleston, this great state was settled by tough pioneer men and strong pioneer women who tamed the wilderness to build a better life for themselves and for their incredible American families. They didn't have a lot of money. They didn't have a lot of luxury. But they had grit and they had faith and they loved each other. And I'll tell you what, they were smart. They are smart. We're the smart ones. Remember, I say it all the time. You hear the elite. They're not elite. We're elite. You're smarter than they are. You have more money than they are. You have better jobs than they do. You're the elite. So let them have the word elite. You're the super elite. That's what it is. I always hate, I always hate when they say, well, the elite decided not to go to something I'm doing, right? The elite. I say, well, I have a lot more money than they do. I have a much better education than they have. I'm smarter than they are. I have many much more beautiful homes than they do. I have a better apartment at the top of Fifth Avenue. Why the hell are they the elite? Tell me. Because you're the elite. Just remember that. You're the elite. They're not the elite. That's just a name. Aren't you insulted when they say the elite? To me, I'm insulted. Always insulted. They're the elite. They're not the elite. Your people and the people that preceded you in West Virginia were the carpenters and the coal miners, the ministers, the metal workers, the farmers, the factory workers. But they all had one. They love their country and they love their God. We stand on the 
the shoulders of generations of American patriots who knew how to fight and they knew how to win. We're winning again. We're winning again. Just like them, we're going to keep on fighting and we're going to keep on winning. And we're going to win for our nation, our children, our families. And we're going to win for our continued freedom. I joke that I'll have Patrick Morrissey coming to me soon. He'll be your senator. And he'll say, Mr. President, the people of West Virginia can't stand winning so much. They haven't won in decades, and now you're winning with coal, you're winning with everything. He's going to say, Patrick, he's going to say, Mr. President, please, they don't want to win so much. They can't stand it. Please, you're winning too much for West Virginia. Please stop winning. And I'm going to say, Patrick, I'm sorry. I don't care what the hell the people of West Virginia want, we're going to keep on winning anyway because I believe that's what they want, right? That's what they want. Because the people of West Virginia never give up, they never give in, and they never back down. Because we are Americans, and our hearts bleed red, white, and blue. We are one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together, we will make America wealthy again. That's happening. That's happening a lot faster than the fake news ever said it could happen. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, West Virginia. Thank you.